Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the RK Tokens podcast. We are the RK Tokens. I am the Anomaly Will Farrow. Bill Thomas, aka Mr. Slick Living. Patrick Cloud. And of course, we got Kadeem on the ones and twos. And today is a Halloween edition of the RK Tokens podcast. So we wanted to get it very Halloween based. What are you holding, Cleo? Little Wolverine. It's a little Wolverine. I was Wolverine for Halloween one year, and it's a little baby Wolverine. Look at the nice little baby Wolverine. Look at Wolfie. Hey, yeah. did you guys see that meme about the uh, how Wolverine low-key looks like two Batmans kissing? Yep. 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 Can't, Can't unsee, unsee it. it. Can't, Can't unsee, unsee it. it. Ruined it. Ruined it. Oh, yep. The worst thing in Marvel history. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think him being on Fortnite might also be up there. Who? Yeah. Wolverine is in Fortnite. Yeah, Wolverine's in Fortnite now. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, like, yo, this can't be true. Oh, okay, also, 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 he doesn't oh, yeah. know who he is. Yeah, he has. A, yeah, what's the story going he on? He doesn't with know him? who he is. Like, you're Wolverine and you don't know who you are. So you don't know why you have claws. Oh, my God. Okay, but. I get that. So, uh, so is Wolverine. Like another, like our our Marvel B Spider Man when it comes to like people just loving the character. Nah, you don't think so? Nah. Okay. He can attack with his claws in Fortnite. I have uh, that. I don't know. Like we saw, like the the reel that they put out of it, and it was him standing there in the original costume, the brown and uh yellow one. That and is kind of tight. <laughs> they didn't and so like the way they played it was he was kind of like he didn't know where he was and what was going on then his claws come out and he's looking at him like he didn't know that they were there and then of course he attacks but it appears like he doesn't know who he is that's kind of cool unless he just picks up regular Fortnite weapons and and shoots and builds stuff i don't know if i could take that that's where I'm at the crossroads with it. Because I'm not a big Fortnite player. Are, are any of us really big Fortnite players? Not players? anymore. I, I, no, I never really. really liked it. I never really liked it. Never got in on it, bro. Yeah, it's, it's gone way too far for me. Like I remember when it, it first started out before it got like really big. And even then, it was just kind of cool to play with your friends. Then when it started like expanding the different seasons. And then like after it got – after they added – the cold section, like the winter section of the map, that's when I fell off. And then like people wanted me to come back in, and then it was like, now you can drive cars, you can fly airplanes, you can, you got like, what? yeah. I was like, it's too much. This is too much for me. He looks great though. Yeah, <laughs> I will say that his design is super dope. So it looks like you have to defeat him in the game somehow, and then you unlock his skin, and then you could just wear it. So yeah, you could be Wolverine holding the assault rifle. Trash. I don't want to see Wolverine build a house. I don't like that at I don't all. Like that at all. You. Yeah, mm. Well, wait. What was Thanos like when? Uh, I don't know if anybody played. Oh, as hell. Like, but like, how? Like, was it with guns? Was it powers? Like, I could have swore they did like a special like animation for him to just be boom, boom, like just throwing the damn uh, infinity gauntlet at people. Because yeah, I would I think, think if, if you Wolverine, you kind of invincible, right? Like, you should be able to take a shot. But this eh. is this is Fortnite. You know they're not playing by Marvel rules. Understood, understood, and we don't want to we don't want to take up too much time with uh, Wolverine because that is not what this is about. Although it is a great character, great costume to dress up as. This is about horror icons. Okay, we are in the horror genre for this Halloween edition of the RK Tokens podcast. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> what? do it again. <laughs> oh, you remember where we were last Halloween around this time doing this kind of thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We yeah, were making, we, uh, we made a bunch of Halloween shows. Yeah, yeah we did. We did. We had we masks. Did. We had props. We were running around Thunder Studios. One of the greatest uh, 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 arguments between Mario and Luigi happened just because of <laughs> Halloween. How about, how about how about the good old um, uh, gummy beans or jelly beans? How about that oh, episode? Wow. Yeah. Remember the jelly beans, Pat? The nasty. Why jelly does beans? that seem like a couple years ago, though? Right. <laughs> yeah. That was last year. Ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Thunder. Uh, you guys might be seeing us up there pretty soon again. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, yes, indeed. But uh, we wanted to keep it going with the whole horror theme uh, every year. So we wanted to start this one off with scariest game you've ever played. Mm. Easy. Now, we, now, we've known Steam to be coming out with some of the best like horror games like we've seen in like probably the last decade. We know from all of the classics that we've had throughout the years and stuff. But I want to know, and I would like to start off with uh, Pat. What was the game that just absolutely terrified you when you played it? Um, this, okay. Um, this game is something that terrified me publicly. Um, I don't know. I, I, I understand why people play horror games on Twitch, but it's, it's risky because you are risking showing hundreds and hundreds of people a, a very scared and weak side of yourself because... Yep. Horror games are very good to play in private. It's very stressful to play it on Twitch. Uh, this is a game I played this year, and this is Outlast. Uh, ah. It's, it's, this is just, it's scary for so many reasons. And I think the number one reason that I everybody can agree on is this guy's a coward. He can't fight. He doesn't even try. <laughs> you are Back. playing the cowardly lion. Uh, yep. You're a reporter trying to get some information on the blah, 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 blah. You go to, to this place that is known for being dangerously haunted with yep. just a camcorder. Okay. That is the only thing that you have. You have your camcorders and you have your legs. And that, that is it. He brought nothing. He brought no weapons. He brought no courage. He brought no oomph. Nope. Um, and you just go into this place. There's these brain dead, insane uh, uh, patients that are, are either trying to kill you or just standing there blankly looking at a, a, a off TV screen or just, you know, scratching or laughing them, to themselves in a corner. And all you are trying to do is make it through this place, gather evidence. You're picking up documents and um Collecting batteries, double A batteries. It is, it is, uh, it is so frustrating that it adds to the terror because it. Most of the game is complete pitch black. You have your cam, You have to pull out your camcorder not only to record things as evidence, but um, to use the night vision so you can see. Period. So obviously. You know, you're collecting these batteries to keep your camcorder on. I don't know what kind of camcorder this is, this is, but your battery life is like a solid minute and a half. It goes out so quickly. So you are yep. constantly trying to collect batteries, and if you run out of batteries, you are S-O-L. You're just in the dark trying to figure things out, and look, you see, you have to hide. That's the only thing you can do. There are people that are looking for you you hide under under things you can hide in lockers you can hide behind tables and just hope and pray that they get away and if you're used to playing gaming people play video games to be more powerful than they are in real life you, you to fight and use fireballs and stuff so to play as a character that is weaker than your actual body and you're just like bro throw an elbow or something See, look, stuff like this is happening. All you, all, your own, only options are running and hiding. And anybody who follows my Twitch, Patrick Clark, um, will know that Outlast terrified me to no end. There's parts where you have to go deep into the sewers, and you're walking around in water, and then you just hear splashing of somebody coming, and you turn around. And there's just two eyes, and then that music starts. There's 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 crazy parts where you have to like find elevator keys, and there's just insane inside uh, uh, patients just walking around and pacing. It's it's really disturbing. There's look, there's dead people everywhere, <laughs> and if you fully immerse yourself in it, which I usually do, turn out all the lights, put on headphones. Headphones is very important because it just coming out of the speakers is one thing, but when it's right there, yeah. you're there, and it's uh, it's humbling to 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 play it online in front of people because it's not an option to be like i'm too scared and turning it off which i'm used to um you have to keep going so yep. as you can see there's some horrifying shit going on on the screen as we speak um he's like a guy being hung by a meat hook um but yeah it just gradually gets worse 
and worse to the point where when it's when you see those credits, it is a huge relief off of your off of your shoulders. So in this game, the fisticuffs are not available either. Not None. Will. Not a single. <laughs> this man can't sing a swing a single punch in this game. You are running for your life, and that is why Outlast is up there on the list of the scariest. So you can't you you can't get your Kevin McAllister on and be all home alone and set up traps like nope. Kevin McAllister would beat this guy to a pulp. Thanks. <laughs> this I, is it's the worst protagonist in video game history, in my in my not, opinion. I, actually, no. If you think about it, that's what these scary movies normally are. Like every time we get mad when a white girl trips, and it's like, bitch, you ain't hurt. Get up. <laughs> this is it. But we also cheer when the person, you know, finally socks, you know, Jason in the face or hit, hits him with the crowbar or something like that, because it's like, finally, you know, and that right. finally moment doesn't really happen, you know, but at the end of the day, he's, he's, he's limber, he's, he's quick, I'll give him that, and uh, the, 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 the monsters in this are very forgetful, they'll look, they'll just be like, oh, I guess there's nobody in here, but it's that guy, this guy, this huge thing follows you the entire game and the stress levels are just out of this world (laughs) frankenstein's inbred son who we just saw toss the lead character off of a damn banister he follows you everywhere he's so annoying you gotta outrun him he's extremely quick for how big he is it's very annoying the music when you get noticed Bro, when you have those headphones on, like Pat said, you're so immersed in the world. It does. It definitely gets your your blood pumping. It's sure one of the games that I, I have enjoyed playing on stream. It is a scary game. Uh, the priest, the butt naked butcher guy. There's a lot in this game to take in. Oh, will, the naked guys. Yes. But the thing oh, that God. I will say, though, that, that ending wasn't a great payoff for me. It was not a great I'm, payoff. I'm going to let you know now, Outlast, none of the... I, I've watched and seen both endings of both games, Outlast 2. None of them give you good endings. There is not, there's not a good ending to these games. They just uh, don't... Yeah, it's I didn't tough. care. I was happy that it just ended because right. the beginning and the middle, it was, was terrifying. And just to give you context of what Cleo was talking about, there is a scene where you find yourself in a jail and... You hit this corner, and there's just these two figures in the dark, butt naked, buff as hell, like, I want to hurt this guy. Like, yes. I want to hurt this guy really, really bad. Yes. And they're just, like, talking to each other in front of you, and they're like, I'm going to do some crazy things to this guy. And it's like, you're terrified, but you don't want to walk away. You're just like, what? Bro? <laughs> you're, cold, but you're holding your remote controller, like... <laughs> Uh, like you in real life get stuck. Like they talking about me, right? Like they, <laughs> they talking about me. They're like, I'm gonna do some crazy things to this guy, and you're in prison in in the pitch black, just looking at these two giant. And it's it's it's, it's <laughs> in night vision, getting told this. Look at this. This guy has a. You see the beeping battery. It's uh, yeah. it's, it's everything uh. is stress. And at the end of the day, you know you can't swing, and that's the worst part. Like, yep. throw the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of the goddamn camera and start swinging on people. That, that, that's the only reason why I'm not sure about this game that I would be good at playing is because I'm going to always attempt to want to attack and then realize, oh, shit, I can't attack. There's I got to run. nothing for you to do. Right. And yeah. there's nothing worse than pressing a button like, you're, you're, like you would attack. And what he does is if you press triangle, he swaps the batteries out. So now you just swapped a fresh battery for a new battery, and now you're just like, still screwed, and down a battery. <laughs> I'm about to kick ass with a pack of Duracells. That's what's about that. <laughs> yeah, at least it. throw the dead batteries. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing there for you, bro. Rough, but yeah, definitely the scariest horror game that I ever played. Go, yep. that's up there. It is up there. But shout out to shout out to um, Outlast Trials. Uh, the Outlast Trial is coming out maybe in 2021. Uh, apparently, it has something to do with the Cold War. Cold War experiments is where they're headed. So Cold War just blew up out of nowhere. Exactly, right? I guess they have to go back to some time. Uh, I mean, kind of make it, them- it's a war that ain't been explained, so I, I think it's like, it's going to be dope. Yeah. Like, again, you kind of make up your own story about it, you know, find facts here and there, and make you know, kind of pull stuff together and make it real. It wasn't even really a war, though. I feel like that's why it was glazed over. It wasn't really like... Yeah. 
I mean, I feel like they, they're just grabbing little facts that we do know about it and just creating a story out of it. Yeah. And then, too, they always say there was a lot of, like, undertone stuff we didn't know about. Like, kind of just, like, what we saw was just, like, the small little things as opposed to, like, what was going down. And then that was the outcome of all of that going down was the Cold War. I appreciate no, that. I can't, I can't do another World War II game. No. <laughs> no. We didn't see them trenches a thousand times. I'm I dead. see one more Nazi flag. I'm going to lose my shit. We get it. It happened. We are so sorry, but the shit cracked off. We get it. <laughs> oh. Yep. That is one way to put it. But all right. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, um, Cleo, man, would you like to give us your game? What was your game that absolutely terrified you? I got you, bro. Okay, so check this out. Years ago, me and Kadeem are still at Rosewood Elementary School. We got a best friend who is spoiled. So every video game that came out, he had. Every console that came out, he had it first. So we, uh, we watched him play the part two of this series, of the game I'm getting ready to mention. And then we found out that there was a third one, and we couldn't wait. He had it the day it dropped, and we are talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, Resident Evil 3, the original for the PlayStation 1. Dealing with Nemesis in this game, in this setting, with these shitty graphics, with Jill Valentine, with this blue halter top and this pencil skirt with a shotgun is by far one of the most stressful, scariest things that I went through as a kid. Because we turned the lights off. It was me... My brother, our friend, sitting there in the dark trying to beat this game, and it took all of five minutes and seeing Nemesis for the very first time and it coming through those big ass speakers. Can you, do you remember they, uh, his mom had the speakers on the walls? Oh, yeah. In no, they, yeah, they literally had like the whole 5.1 stereo surround, the ones that, you know, people try to sell. It, 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 but it was all set up. It was all it was set already up. The AV, set up. Yeah, the AV receiver was in that bitch, and it was, it was knocking. It was for show knocking. So we turned it on. We see Nemesis for the very first time. We all scream. Uh, our friend dies. We turn all the lights back on. And we're like, okay, now let's try to play the game. <laughs> for real this time. Dog, this game is by far one of the scariest ones uh, for me. Just because of what you got to go through. The setting of it. We talked about it earlier. The camera of this and the tank controls. It's a pain in the ass. Coming off of Resident Evil 2 where you were just fighting zombies. And then maybe running into a liquor every now and then. That's one thing. But you had this huge, gigantic guy bursting through walls, throwing tentacles at you, smacking you into a different camera angle. If he caught you, it was crazy. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis is for sure up there for me. We recently got the remake for the PS4. You could beat that game in like four hours, five hours, if you know exactly what you're doing. So a little bit of a letdown. Uh, but it's for sure up there for me as one of the scariest games, bro. So shout out to... Um, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, man. Good old yeah, Capcom. Capcom. Yeah. Good old uh, Capcom. Could have been the best outfit for fighting zombies in. She got like a club fit on. Dog, she's trying to go to the go-go. Like, what are you doing? She's in a whole baby blue halter top. Right, and then this thing just bust. This thing just broke out. That shotgun is crazy, though. <laughs> yeah. And she gonna work with that shotgun. I'm trying. I'm trying to get to this that cut scene where we where you see Nemesis for the first time. Yeah. It's oh, crazy. The cr oh, there he is. There this motherfucker is. Oh, this motherfucker. The craziest part about it is like, yo, we we had to figure out how to headshot in that game where you couldn't really aim. You had to slightly tilt your uh your wow. left analog stick down just a little bit for your character to aim that much higher and then boom, that's a headshot. Cuz if you just aimed it up, you're up here. The yeah. only worst aiming was Goldeneye. Oh. If they weren't dead in front of you, the, using the C buttons and the R was impossible. Ass. It, it just it just did not work, and I feel like that's how Resident Evil was. Like, I feel like Resident Evil for me was it was too clunky until four. Four. Like, I really got into four, and then I was able to go back because I was a fan. But like one, I played. I was too young, scared, turned it off. Two, gotcha. I was like, this is tight, but it was a little clunky. Three. It just it just really didn't do it for me. But then like when four on and then the remakes, I was able to like catch up. So 
it was just uh, it's come so far but i don't know how you guys were doing that uh, <laughs> i did not win. finish this game here here's the uh here's the cut i don't know if y'all want to hear this you want to hear it or yeah, do y'all want to hell right. yeah nigga because this is the scene that made me run out yep let me go ahead and get this set up for y'all i just want to make sure we're all set Yo, look at the boots though. She got them Steve Maddens on us here. Stop, sir. You stop that, sir. They should, they should got the, the buckle on a pilgrim hat. Oh, oh. Here we, here this we go. This is so random. General, <laughs> we've got a. Oh, they look trash, This is the only thing I like about shit like that. I would not be there after he got picked up out of left. Like, nah, nigga, you, you done. Good. Dude, how'd he go help? Right. Like, he got you. So here's the funny thing about this game, the other side of this game, right? Like, yeah, we're talking about how scary this game is. Sorry, but fight with the monster or enter the police station. You actually have a choice to choose. You have a choice, yeah. You have a choice to choose whether you want to stand outside and fight this goddamn thing. Or I didn't think it was a choice. Yeah, I why would you the police station? <laughs> right, right. The thing is, of course, if you beat Nemesis on these or incapacitate them, you get you get parts for a, a the, like the best weapon in the game if you're able to take them down. Did right. you yeah, try. not worth it. Not worth it. I just want to put he that out there. No lips for me. He had no lips, so I don't I don't understand who who picked fight with the monster. And like, oh, what are you fighting? Like, what you about to do? Look at this, like. Here we, here we go. Boom, a lot of shots, a lot of movement, even though, like, oh my God, her her three point, her three, triple threat stance pivot. <laughs> so slow. Triple threat stance pivot with the shotty, bro. Right? It's like she got a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> like she's you know, dribbling. Like she's Take in the paint. Up down the court till I say stop. Yeah. Oh, man. Like she in the paint right now. She is literally oh, in the paint. paint. Box it out. Box it out. Bro, Box it out. Yellow with the, tri with the triple. Threat. ISO, ISO, hit it, hit it. Hit but it's it. crazy with the J, because with the J, up, move. Just like, just like how the Outlast guy can't fight, that that makes it scarier. That frustration because you're just like, I, it's this guy's getting too close. Like you're literally like trying to turn around like this, and there's zombies after you. Like that's right. that's nerve wracking. Oh nope. my. Oh, right, yeah, this, yeah, man. There it is. There she is. She got him. I don't, oh, oh, oh no. wait. Oh, wait. Back up. Oh! <laughs> Dog, Slim you know how pissed off I would have been as a kid to see him drop and then get right back up? I'd have quit. I'd be like, yo, I'm not fighting him. If you did choose fight and you shot him that many times, I would assume it, it, it's impossible. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You know how, like, like, some of those games, especially for some reason ninja games, like, you meet the boss in the beginning and you're supposed to lose. Mm -hmm. That's what this yeah. comes off as. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, Ninja Gaiden has that. Nin literally, Ninja Gaiden has that in the beginning of the game. Fight the boss. You can beat him. You can beat him. But why would you? It would take you're forever. Insane. And yeah. too, if you didn't come prepared, like, see, like, he out of bullets. Like, yo, she, I, I can't believe it. I was like, yo, she has nine bullets left. Is she going to kill him with a gun? No, she killed him with a last minute stab. E Eagle parts A is the item that you get. There you go. Eagle That's part A for the Desi. That was it for That's the Desi. That's you didn't get the full Desi. No. Every time you have the encounter, like Kadeem said, if you beat him, you get more parts to a gun that is the most powerful gun in the game. But I wouldn't have done that. I would have never fought this guy. Of of course. At the same time, since she did not go inside, she gets this card case, so you can go inside, use that, unlock some other stuff inside the police department. So, again, there's reasons why I'm doing this, but us as kids at 10 or 11, I'm not doing nah. this. No. Nah. Nah. I'm scared right. out of my life. I'm scared out of my mind trying to get through this. Nah, you, you're trying to avoid them, not kill them. Exactly. Like that was, until Resident Evil 4, it was just avoid them at all costs. Then it was like, okay, this is a little bit smoother. I'm a little bit older. We could concentrate on, like, really killing these things. But before yep. that, it was either run away or turn the shit off. <laughs> that was it. That was yep. it. But yeah, this was definitely one of those games that will shock, that will definitely scare you uh, from the past, uh, Patrick with the present. Um, and for mine, I'm going to go with one that was um, not played by a lot of people because it was truly scary as shit. 
Um, mind you, I was not warned about this game. Uh, clearly, I did not have great friends growing up. Uh, I was told to play this game. It was like Resident Evil. Hey, you will enjoy it. Play it in the dark at night with all the lights out. So, of course, I'm from Port Arthur. So when lights is out, only thing that's on is the porch light. Because the porch light out is pitch black. Okay. So my game was Silent Hill 2. Mm. Silent mm. Hill 2. Let me just, first of all, let me, let me give you just a little bit of backstory on this whole fucked up game. First of all, this don't even, this ain't even the sequel. This ain't even the sequel to the first Silent Hill. This is a complete different rendition of Silent Hill. It's about this guy, I believe his name is uh, James Sunderland. He like comes to this town after he gets like a letter from his uh, wife who died like three years ago. So that's from what- From I believe. Huh? From, ca- from Cantor, I believe. I believe so. And yeah. so like when he gets there, he finds like this 13, he's like not 13, but like teenage kid who's looking for their mother. And so, like, they start to go, like, try to figure out exactly what's going on. And they meet these other people who are also, like, looking for, like, these uh, either, like, dead relatives or looking for somebody and get and got lost. And so going here, like, the town is completely, like, empty. It's a real small town. So, like, you're going through trying to find things and shit. It's like, it's so dark and it's so creepy. Like, even outside, it's foggy as fuck. It's a straight overcast. But the sounds, like you said, uh, like, with Outlast... It don't do nothing without the headphones, like bro, like th- and again, this is before you could use headphones back in the gap. So, the sounds that they had coming out of here was crazy because you could like, I don't know how to make it how to make it make sense, but like the ambiance of like where you are, you could hear that, like you could hear the eeriness coming out of these speakers, like where they talk, how wind blew, how doors creaked open, the whole nine, and so like there's this thing. That's also chasing you just like how y'all have nemesis, just like how you have that big old fat thing to keep chasing you to throw you out the window. Bears on this you. has pyramid oh. head. Now I just want the you to only way I can a tell six you to fully foot eight guy just, who was just probably give it got try the same this, size like muscles as the rock struggling. with a big ass pyramid for a helmet and a sword even he can't fucking pick up. But when he <laughs> hits you with it, it's ridiculous. Is there an instant kill? Huh? Is it instant kill? It no no no, it's not instant kill, but it's definitely like a two hitter. Like if you get hit once, everything slows down, everything is like you're near death. If he catch you one more time, that's it. And then on here too, he don't even start off with the sword. Like there's a whole area where like you have to like run around in a whole like when you go to this uh hotel, there's like an infinite loop that you run into with him that you have to keep running while he's chasing you to get out. But it like never ends. And so basically it's kind I don't want to say it's like limbo, but it's basically where like dead souls have went that then got caught and now they're being tormented and tortured. Jesus. And they're using like signals to bring them here to free them. Have you played the first one? I didn't play the first one. That uh I was told to play this one. If the first one's even more Because I think the I first one is it has a woman, if memory serves me correct. No, nah, for, yeah, I just one. didn't know if they were connected. Or no, no, no. Silent Hill one and two are have, are completely a different thing. Like, I don't even think Silent Hill is a town in the first one. I could have it reversed. I think they switched it up. Let me see. Yeah, it says uh, while not focusing on the characters and plot thread of the Silent Hill game, Silent Hill two takes place in a series namesake town located in northeastern United States. Yeah, so it's set in another area of the... Oh, it's set in another area of the town, and it explores some of Silent Hill's backstory. So it shows you how this place came to be. I wish this shit was on a PlayStation network. It looks I think they... Didn't they remaster this, could they? They have, a, they have the HD collection. Uh, it's... Unfortunately, it goes down as one of the worst uh, ports. Damn it. Because cause they really didn't update it that well. Like, it doesn't look much better at all. It's also $100. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have it, Pat. I mean, we can always get around that. Don't worry about that, Pat. Don't let that price hit. If you want to play it, you can play it. I've been playing it. Um, it is for sure. What it will say about the eeriness and the sound of this game for sure gets you. I literally played the first five minutes by myself before I actually was going to stream it. I got to the first save point and turned it off because of that, because of the music. 
Literally, no, how just, eerie that. Yes, I'm not even Pat. I'm, not, I'm really not joking with you, bro. Like, Pat, five, do minutes. it in headphones. It's gonna freak yeah. you the fuck out because yeah. it's like yeah. when you and I and I can't exact. I'm not exaggerating this. Like, if you play in your studio and you cut the lights off, like low key. If it's pitch black, you kind of feel like the darkness behind you is infinite. Ooh. You yeah. kind of feel like if you turn around, it's like, yeah. oh, it really ain't nothing back there. Like if I, I could keep walking. Oh yeah. Like that's what this game makes you feel like. It feels like you're not even at your house anymore. Like you're with them there. It's crazy because the scary games when we were growing up was this and Resident Evil, but Resident Evil had the hype. It was a little bit more straightforward because it was zombies, you know, but this was just like 100% about the horror and the scariness. You and know? the psychological, like, for sure. had like scary, you know, and like karate and all that stuff, but this was just like freak you out. So I think I rented the first, the first one and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I, yeah. I was just, I, I didn't have it in me, but it looks cool. Like, I feel like I'd play it now. No. Yeah, I, I would I would definitely recommend uh, to play it during, on one of your streams just with headphones in, lights off. Like, yo, you gonna see why I'm why I was scared. I don't know if it still holds up today, but I know when I played this as a kid, just with all the lights off in the living room and just hearing them sounds. Like, I didn't go to bed. Like, I literally like I was sitting on the couch and I was so scared I could not get up. Like, I literally fell asleep like this. Just yep. And like my mom came at like six o'clock. She's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I was like, "Don't no, ask. I'm going to bed." To know that this like uh, it was PT, right, Kadeem? That PT. Uh, Hideo Kojima, a name that you know makes Will and Pat both be like, "Ugh, they can't stand them." The fact that he made this this demo called PT, and it became one of the most sought after like horror game demos to play. It's still legendary. Like it came out, I want to say three or four years ago. And like, if you have that game downloaded on your PS4, you could sell your PS4 for almost like what? Can you like a thousand dollars? Because you can't get the game anymore. Oh well. Oh, go ahead. My bad. To know that that game was supposed to lead into uh, the Silent original Hill. collaboration between uh, d- uh, what's the guy? What's the lead character from um 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 uh, Death Norm- Stranding? Norman. Norman Reedus, but what's his name? Yeah, Norman Reedus. Yeah, exactly. That demo, at the very end of it, it shows him show up. You see Norman Reedus or Daryl, and it's uh, it's the brand new Silent Hill game. Hideo Kojima was supposed to be the director of the new uh, Silent Hill game for the new gen. Things didn't work out. Unfortunately, didn't we never got it. But knowing that he would have been the mastermind behind the next horror-based game in that franchise, I would have loved to see how it would have turned out. Yeah, and just to just to as I know how you like the whole Konami and, and fashion and stuff like that, as we've talked about with like him having like things on the uh, cover of Metal Gear for you to use within the game. Same thing with this. This guy made six different endings for mm, this yep. video game. Depending yep. on what. Depending on how you, depending on the decision you made at the end, because it involves several different characters. So depending on what routes you take and how you make these decisions is how the story ends itself. But uh, Konami gave a, gave six endings to this, uh, which was just for us, which is crazy. Like, but I never beat this game. Like I would like, I was too scared to finish this game. I don't, I don't blame you. But just to know that he did like six endings, and from what I'm told, all of them end horribly. Like none of them are like none of them are good. <laughs> yeah, like none of them are like, hey, I escaped and I've gotten closure. Like no, so, y'all are leaving. Uh, there is one gag ending. I will say that. I don't want to. Do you want to spoil the gag ending? I mean, no. If they're gonna play it, don't do it. Because I'm sure, like, especially I don't, Cleo being I don't, a Konami purist, he's gonna want to. He's not going. He's not gonna touch this game. I okay. promise you that. He won't touch it. Uh. I, I'm gonna go ahead and say, it. gag ending is a dog is controlling all of this, and that is why Kojima needed yep. to be involved with everything Konami was doing, mm-hmm. from a Castlevania dog. to Metal Gear Solid to Silent Hill. He deserves to be a part of every meeting. They should have and put three that of them you can't get unless you replay the game. Yep. So. Jeez, that's really that's, weird. <laughs> yep. There's a lot. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. So, you know, that that's Kajira and all of them boys, man. But uh but yeah, so uh those are our games that completely 
shocked and scared the shit out of us. But keep it in the Halloween fashion since we are talking about games that scared us. Also, you know, movies. We can't forget about the iconic horror villains. And we've seen how they've transferred over to uh, video games like Friday the 13th and um, other games like that. And so we started thinking about not only just from horror icons like Freddy, uh, Michael Myers and stuff, but just in the, the horror genre itself. Who deserves to get their own video game? Like who do like who or what movie, what show, what character or what group do we think it's like, yo, this was so good. I can see it becoming a video game. And I would like to start off just to kind of set the tone so we know exactly like what's coming. My choice was the heels have eyes as a third person shooter. Mm. You could be a, a, a creative character if you like, if you like, but you can even keep the same scenario as the first one. Y'all are traveling, car breaks down. Oh God! Here it goes. God, this movie was so bad. Oh, Dog. these movies were so bad. The poster, the poster is like giving me so much cringe right now. Oh. I'm sorry, but don't mean to interrupt. But that first movie is but like dog. Oh. Oh, it's such a harsh watch, dog. And then that go, second go, one? They go in. Yeah. They do. They go in. They take it. I need it. I need that same aesthetic, too. Don't hold nothing back. Keep that same energy. I don't, I don't Keep know. Keep that same you. energy. I need in a, it. In a video game? Yeah. Nah. I need that same energy. If this you do Outlast that, like that, I need that same that's, energy. That's the problem. I was about to say, don't, don't get it twisted. Outlast 2 is right there. Right. Outlast 2 is in this conversation of, of being on this type of level of stuff for Hills Have Eyes. It's right there. I feel Come like now. that's the part of life that doesn't have to be in video games. Man, <laughs> let it be, man. Nuke Town, you gotta go through the history, you gotta try to find your people, you gotta go into them, them fucking caves and cities and them areas oh, and stuff. Oh, God. Oh, oh good Lord. Yeah. Oh, Just think about it. Think how greedy I, that get. You get to get I mean, your weapons. I, I would say the second one would probably make more sense just because they're military. So the third that person shooter. Yeah. The it third could be a franchise. Yeah, it'll work. It'll work. Get some old military stuff in there, somebody hella deformed and and whatnot. You got a whole you got a whole dope game. Yeah. There you go. Good call. Y'all think about all the horrible parts of this movie and y'all just like it's it's rough. There's it's, it's mostly so horrible. Hard, bro. Like I haven't <laughs> watched this movie. I haven't watched either of them since the first time I watched them. And I'm cool with it. But that just shows you like the lasting power that that title, those characters and those scenes have on you. It is a very scarring thing. And the fact that there was a unrated version of yep. the movie that came out on DVD, I was like why? What do oh, yeah. you mean? Oh yeah, and it's worse. Yeah, what did they oh. leave out? I don't oh, a whole bunch of stuff. Like I was working at Blockbuster when these came out, and so I didn't realize the difference between like what unrated leaves out and then what like the regular versions leave out. Oh, they leave so much stuff out of the uh, the rated version and the unrated version. Same thing with uh, Devil's Rejects, the uh, Rob Zombie film. The unrated version is way better than like the stuff that they had to take out. I'm I'm good because I'd be afraid to see what happens when you get a game over, like, <laughs> like when they when they defeat you and like just take your body. Like I don't want to see that game over screen. You know, I'm I'm good. Yeah, this this movie literally made you get gas before you drove in any kind of area like this if you took a road uh -huh. trip. And based on a true story, yep, there's actually a bean family that were cannibals that were inbred and living in the caves and they were out there attacking and doing that same stuff to people for a long time before they were caught by a little little battalion <laughs> it's, huh. it's creepy uh, yeah just the shake just the shakes right there let me know this would be a hard game this would be a hard game and y'all yes so i think that's a great way to set the aesthetic of like what we mean by horror and video games and which one deserves one so um out of pat and cleo which one of you would like to go next i'll go first i'm just gonna bring the you know the tone down a little bit you know something that we could just enjoy at the end of the day and not walk away from what to say are, are you sure because you know I'm, 
I'm gonna give both. Which it depends. I gave you two options. Which one are you pulling up? I, I, I went with well, I went with one that's also based on a true story. So I mean, you Damn know. It. Okay. All right. Well, I'll I'll give I'll leave with that one, and I'll bring up my other one later. Um, I'm gonna go with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game that plays very similar to either Resident Evil or the uh, Jason, the uh, Friday the 13th video game, which is really popular online where you either play as the campers or you play as the killer, obviously Jason. Uh, I would like to see that play out. Now, we've already seen uh, Leatherface in video games. If you didn't know, he is in Mortal Kombat as a playable character. I believe he's in Mortal Kombat 10. Uh, yeah. as a DLC character, which is crazy how that was let in because originally there was Freddy in um, Mortal Kombat 9 as a, yep. as a playable character. I was like, that's too much. And then they brought out J uh, Jason. I was like, okay. And then they had the Xenomorph, a.k.a. the alien from the movie Aliens. I was like, oh, okay, now we're getting out of hand. But there's a market for it. People love it. So be it. So he's already made his crossover into our controllers, and uh, I think that'd be a cool survival type of game to play. My other option, something that I think, you know, with the success of Among Us now, which, you know, is, is, is a, a game where to enjoy it, you kind of have to have the ability to talk to other people. I would like to maybe see a version of Are You Afraid of the Dark brought back, but if it was like how the Telltale video games are, where it's more like option based. Mm -hmm. Like, that's such a big market. Like, I don't, I've, I've maybe played one of those games. I think it was the Batman one that I, I enjoyed the first half of it. So knowing that it's such a big market for those games, I think that'd be cool to bring the Are You Afraid of the Dark series back and tell some of the classic ones. Like, of course, we have the um, uh, Zebo the Clown. We have the uh, Nasiratsu uh, Vampire that's in the movie theater. That's one of the oh, classic shit. episodes. Um, is. The, 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 the Ventriloquist Doll, that's another one. And uh, yeah, Are You Afraid of the Dark is up there for me for sure. It's one of like a really, I mean, that intro is scary as shit in itself. Wait, yeah. do they both have a uh, ventriloquist episode? That and Goosebumps? Goosebumps had a ventriloquist thing. They and had the puppet. Are you Afraid of the Dark had one. Had a puppet? Yeah, it had a the puppet. I always I mix them two up. I know one had a whole suit with the red bow tie and a little freckle. That's right. Goosebumps. That's okay. Goosebumps. That's the one I always get confused. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. One of the t one of the the Maori twins was when Are You Afraid of the Dark? I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Melissa Joan Hart was in one too. That's crazy. Shout out to them. They definitely have I think, a look. Uh, the Lawrence brothers were in some too as well, right? Shout out to the Lawrence brothers, man. I did a film with Joey. No, Joey's the main one. Joey, Andy, Andrew, uh, Andy Lawrence. I did it with Andy. Andy. Shout out to Andy Lawrence, bro. Yeah. Yo, that vampire. From the Are You Afraid of the Dark episode in the movie theater is still scary as shit. I'm looking nope. at a picture of him right now. Nope. Hey, Nofarasu actually, yeah, Nofarasu actually made a, uh, a cameo appearance on SpongeBob. Same exact guy. He did. He did. Damn. He's flicking the thing. He's the ha he's in the hash flinging slasher episode. Wow, <laughs> that is fun, that's fun dope on Nick's part. Exactly. Fun fact. The hash flinging slasher. The I can see hash flinging, the trash bringing. <laughs> Cash singing. <laughs> I love our, I love that damn episode. Well, but yeah, well, man, it. and the Telltale thing would be pretty cool. And uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a survival game, I'd love for that. Resident Evil style would be dope because you could do Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of like Seven or, or The Village. Because like, yeah. um, especially like with the family, and if you really wanted to go off of like Leatherface's real story, you yeah. could you could really do a lot of that stuff with that. Yeah, I'm in for that. So yeah, I think I think those are dope. Yeah, Mr. Cloud, you up next, brother? Uh, okay. So originally, my first thought was I am Legend, uh, just because I thought it would be dope to uh, fight zombies as Will Smith as the only person in the city left, trying to find somebody else with the dog element. Uh, but when I thought about the co-op for that, it's impossible. <laughs> You're, it's literally just Will Smith. So um, since you know, you know, uh, based on the the show, um, the uh, game that I brought in the last games that define us, I really leaned into uh, co-op. But I also love games that have a sense of humor. So what I chose was one of my favorite zombie movies, uh, Zombieland. Oh. I think that going with a comedy 
uh, that's also very, very derived in horror and sort of like a parody of other horror games would be dope. You have, you know, obviously the four that you see, Wichita, Columbus, Tallahassee, and Little, Little Rock. Rock. Um, but then I think that you could also expand into having like Bill Murray as a, a DLC character, you know, just like dope stuff like that. Um, I, obviously the campaign would be super dope, but multiplayer, you know, dealing with waves of zombies with interesting weapons in levels like the gas station or, you know, the, uh, the, um, the, the amusement park or Bill Murray's house, you know, just like all those like classic scenes, you get the Hummer, you know, loadouts based on like where they were able to like, uh, get, inf um, excuse me, weapons and all that stuff. Like just based on the movie and how it was kind of already, it already had that video game feel, you know, like they, he, he was giving you like rules the whole time and, and they, they were just using like weapons that were completely out there. I think that this would be an amazing uh, online game because, you know, obviously I feel like it would have that Avengers feel where you can kind of pick one of the characters and just sort of like run around zombie land trying to find... Uh, it's almost like it almost has a, a Fortnite or, or Warzone feel because you guys are kind of just squatted up, going around, getting supplies, making sure that you have enough weapons. But instead of, you know, a, another character on multiplayer killing you and you're out, you're just trying to survive this zombie wave which i think is super dope i think it'd be dope too to add like the like how you said the rules as extra points like if you shoot someone twice that's a double tap if you evade a zombie and run cardio you get extra points for getting a twinkie and stuff like that and then like you said with the four different people they got like different kind of powers like uh what well, not wichita uh tallahassee like has at like that uh, strength power he can connect and then just start wailing on zombies. Um, yeah. Wichita is extra fast and and limber and stuff. This like would be it. dope. This would be a dope video yeah. game. And but, I feel like they would probably they could probably sprinkle in some things that weren't in the film itself. Like I would like it if there was like a parkour element. <laughs> so yeah. like it, all of them were limber because the one thing that they weren't really was athletic. They were just kind of like in one spot shooting. So if mm -hmm. you could kind of like introduce that sort of like climbing aspect because every zo good zombie game has limber characters because you have to get away from them so yeah. i think that if you gave them a little bit of parkour uh yeah this would be this would be lit and it would be hilarious which i love yeah i think that would be dope uh yeah to, to run back to pat's original idea of doing a i am legend video game playing as will smith in that setting is it safe to say if there was a multiplayer it's like you know, Will Smith seems like he has the kind of power to be like, hey, I need my likeness from Bad Boy, so I need Mike Lowry. Hilarious. And I need my likeness from Men in Black. I need Agent J. J? Yeah, it was J. J. It was J. J. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I need my likeness from the Fresh Prince, so I need Fresh Prince likeness. Or he so got other people like this. Online it's, just, it's just different skins of Will Smith online. What if it was different skins of, like, Will Smith's sidekick? Like, you could get Carlton or Martin... <laughs> you got know, Margot Robbie from Focus running up in this bitch. <laughs> that would be wow. tight. You could get Tommy Lee Jones. Yep. <laughs> I love it. I love Josh it. Josh Brolin from When He Go Back in Time at, on MIB. I love it. That'd be that dope. Be Actually, a Gemini Man game would be dope like that. Oh, oh. his younger stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get like all the different versions though come after him. That'd be dope. Shout out also to uh, a free roam game uh, based on Get Out, where you are a black man trying to escape from just racist white people. <laughs> that'd be a great, that'd be a great LA. Yes. I'm um, pretty sure that's somewhere online on Steam. Somebody has probably ran an independent game about that by you now. You got to be like LA. Sunken Place, you got to go to the Sunken Place and shit. That'd be dope. Yep. <laughs> oh, another honorable mention too. Uh, I wouldn't make this multiplayer, but this would be a dope like single player campaign game. Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm. I just yeah. think with like, especially watching like like how Scarecrow on Batman, like how they alter like when he goes into his fear toxin, and you see the different stages and stuff. I think that would be dope to see like the true capability of like Freddy's powers to put them in these scenarios, and then also too like that single player like has to get like items because again too like you're in the dream, so you can make up stuff too. So then that helps you power up to help yourself defeat Freddy. You just got to get out of the dream. That'd be lit. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say this here. A lot of these games, they're, 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 
the, the Nintendo had a whole, I mean, NES had a whole bunch of games to come out for all these movies back in the day. You yes, know what I mean? Did. There, there is a, there is a, there's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. There, there is a Friday the Thirteenth game. All those games are ass. All those games are terrible. terrible. You know what I mean? Like Nightmare on Elm Street. I, that's probably one of the better ones because, like, like you said, Will, the whole idea of them, like, when you have pretty much have two life bars. You have your regular life when you're alive, and if you get hit enough, you get pretty much you end up going to sleep and getting sent into that other world. So then everything it becomes a lot harder. So yep. they had that aspect to it before. It's still a tough game no matter what. It's old NES games. You know how that those games were. So, but yeah, to, for them to upgrade it, I would I'd love to see that because honestly, Freddy Krueger is one of my favorite villains or or horror characters of all time. Because the idea that you can have a you can have a dream about the guy right now, you could. He's you know? perfect for like video games. Like he's he like in like everything that you couldn't do in a movie. You right. could do there. Like just imagine like fighting him and then like the different things he turns into. Like remember like when he turns into the big ass worm with his face. Like that's the boss fight. Yeah. Like when he turns into these huge characters, like that's your boss fight. You can even bring it in like the DLCs where like Jason is now in the dream chasing you as well. And now yeah. you gotta fight both of them. Oh yeah. Gary Towns, bro. Yeah. So you, have you have you guys played uh Hitman? Hmm? Uh with you. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know how like you have to pick. It's basically an open scenario, but you could wait and and see certain things develop so that you can get certain opportunities to kill people. Mm-hmm. Yep. Since, since we're talking about classic villains, I think it would be dope for you to have like a Chucky game. And the point oh. was, yeah. you were hey. you kept being repackaged and sold to different families, and based on every family, you had to take everyone out like a certain oh. way, like. You had to wait oh. for the dad to go to work, and then you could kill like the mom, and then like <laughs> it's like yeah. literally you take out every family and then repackage yourself and get sold to another toy store, and then you get into another family. That'd be crazy. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty cool setup, bro. <laughs> that's dope. Yeah, I'd love that. No, I actually would love that. I mean, the first, being that short and being first person and trying to just run through the house at that right? height, <laughs> right? Which you can always fall down. And exactly. Then, and then they'd be like, whoa, what the hell? What is Chucky doing in here? And they'd just pick you up and carry you out, but you just, like, do the whole doll thing. Yeah, the oh, whole, thing whole too, Toy Story drop. And another thing, too, <laughs> as well, uh, they can fight back. Because remember, like, in the lore of Chucky, sometimes he becomes real. So he can feel pain. Huh. And that was yeah. one of the curses he had with the talisman. So, like, you could actually at some point stab him, and he'll really, like, feel it, and it hurts him. So oh, that that could be yeah. also like a weakness in chasing him, like when you're chasing somebody in the house or something. Just yeah, to make it. Cool. He could corrupt other toys for co-op. Oh, yeah. that'd be hilarious! <laughs> oh, like a teddy bear. <laughs> oh, the traps! You got to make traps too. Like be able oh, to yeah. make traps to set up in the house. That'd be tight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, but I think that's a great way to come to the end of this podcast. Thank you for everybody tuning in and. Checking out the video uh, video version and the audio version. We thank and, and appreciate each and every time y'all checking this out. Hope that y'all like this Halloween special. But let us know. There are plenty more icons, video, uh, video games, movies, TV shows that are out there that deserves its own video game. Let us know in the comments below what you think should either get a redo or should finally get its shine in the video game industry. Make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notifications. Check us out on all streaming platforms, including Twitch, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the whole nine. You just got to type in Arcade Tokens. Those three coins will pull up. Shout out to the tech guy, Kadeem. We are the Arcade Tokens. I am the Anomaly Will Farrow. We are Thomas A.K. Mr. Slick Living. Catch your cloud. And we will catch you next time. Yeah.